If you don't get the entry right, your throw is toast. Jesus. And we're gonna talk about it in today's video, so check it out. Welcome to Shot Put 101 Part 2. We are talking about the rotational throw, and today we're gonna to talk about how we basically look at that entry. In our system, and what we talked about in the last video, basically the entry we refer to as pillars one and two. Now, why do we do six pillars? We've seen other people historically teach the throw kind of start, middle, finish. The way we do it, if you notice how our things, we're, we're building the connections, and that's again how, the, how you would wanna train. So in our video today, comparing kind of four throwers at four different stages, looking at basically around 25 feet, 50 feet, 60 feet, and 70 feet. Again, all of these athletes have been exposed to the system. So number one athlete came to a camp, and a young Australian athlete, first uh, weekend doing the rotational shot. And this is gonna give this athlete a massive advantage as he gets older and works his technique more and more. He's just gonna get more and more comfortable with the throw. You're gonna see strength and balances and different things like that. Younger guy, he's still learning to move his body, working into these bigger positions. You're gonna notice like athlete number four is an athlete that I had coached for multiple years, athlete number three for multiple years as well. So I'm able to control their strength training. And so those are gonna be things that are gonna enable athletes to move in those better positions as they get better technically. So today, one of the key things is you need to understand is that entry. And we're gonna look at that in terms of mechanics. We've got upper body, the way we always look at it, upper body, lower body, what's going on with your trunk, what's going on with your legs, and then you have your feet and your arms, right? So those th things all have have to work in a sequence and if that sequence is incorrect the throw gets choppy you get pauses what we're trying to do when we throw further is we're going to be moving faster we're going to have less hesitations more continuous and that's going to enable you to accelerate as you hit into the ball so the very first thing we're going to do when we want to set up our entry again we talk about setting up pillar one there's very specific sequence to create a repeatable throw if you look at the best throwers in the world whether it's shot discus javelin hammer you look at a throw in their career and you look at the throw five years later and it's almost the exact same thing because they're throwing very similar distances. And this is what makes your legends. They hit those technical efficient points. They're big, strong, fast, and they can just repeatedly hit that. What you see with young throwers is they're all over the place in the beginning. So the start is gonna be really critical. That's one of the main things that we teach in the throwing chain reaction. The athlete number one is a perfect example of showing you that what's really possible to be able to achieve in your throw in just a single day. As we go and we set up, one of the things that we're doing is we're really trying to create what we call a separation. Why do we wind? Because we're going to create separation. But one of the things we talk about is we're creating separation to create stretch reflex. And again, if you've watched any of our videos and we had a video on how to throw the discus and we talked about terminology, which was the first video, there's stretch reflex, understanding how that works so that your body is kind of whipping and moving into positions. And so when you set up the proper sequence and you can move into those positions, you're going to start moving more reactively. So you have such a small period of time to execute your throw. And it means that this is not how the system works. Let me make this clear. Okay, pillar one, check, check, check. Pillar two, check, check, check. Pillar three. It's set the chain reaction and go and react because you have such little time. So what we did with this young thrower, he is conceptually understanding the throw from a more technical standpoint, and this is enabling him to move. So as he's gone through the day, worked positions and trained, now he can be reactive because he's gonna hit a position, you're gonna react. So you can react good good or you can react badly. And what we want to do is be able to show you guys so many of your problems can be fixed. And a lot of times people are focusing on legitimate problems. They're not turning the right foot. They're pulling away. They're dropping the elbow. Are all those things in our system, we show you how those things connect. That's in fact a chain reaction. And if you fix those other things, those other three or four things automatically start to improve because you're coming out of the throw more balanced. So again, and one of the key things that we're going to look at, you're going to notice them as they set up. Thrower number one is day want a new camp format and a system updates that we did this year and the results have been even better than they have been historically so thrower number two uh it was in his first week he'd come out and he was really starting to move ton better and you're going to see there's going to be key changes and updates in our system that are enabling him to pick things up even a little faster thrower number four came from a different concept in a different system so there was movement things that had to be rechanged. so he didn't start from scratch and that's a big thing about thrower number one he is 
gives a blank slate so he learned the right mechanics in the first day and he's so therefore he's throwing a lot better and thrower number four we were a team worked very closely with his coach his coach he learned the throwing chain reaction system and so that way we're always communicating the same language the same objectives remember when this athlete was there when he first broke 60 feet was there when he broke 65 feet and there when he broke 70 feet and obviously through 72 three was this athlete's PR all that being said let's look at that entry so one of the things that we're trying to do is you're going to notice that all these athletes your left arm has to be long. So when we look at the upper body, the left arm has to stay in a long path as it opens. So it is a counterbalance, right? If you were on the tightrope, the longer the bouncing bar, the better you are. If you had little short bars, you're gonna be falling. So all of these athletes are learning how to take the long path into the throw. When you look at the beginning thrower, you're gonna notice here as he turns, this arm is kind of going a little bit ahead, but he's doing a nice job of keeping the, the shoulders back. So the arm's staying nice and long. The the week one guy nice and long and these guys again nice and long now you're gonna notice here the next big thing is you keep this long and you want to get the left the entry side lower body moving ahead and then the upper body is gonna appear to catch back up so you're gonna notice here so this young athlete does a great job of getting that foot turned you notice that we talk about double turning of the lower body so that we can get the lower body rotational and he's doing a really nice job of keeping the upper body back so we've got a long entry arm we've got the chest staying back and we have the lower body moving ahead and so you're gonna look at our week one thrower same thing long arm entry lower body's moving ahead and now this is you're going to notice here this is going to be the difference you're going to see he does a pretty good job now look at the more advanced throwers you're going to notice that the sweep leg is staying nice and wide and you're going to notice that thrower three again collapses at the hip a little bit so this is something we'll continue to work on and this is what we work on to get athlete number three up to 65 feet and beyond right now again for today all we want to focus on is you have to learn this motion and this is not a natural motion so the key thing is what we'll do is a series of drills in our system we have actually 11 drills now for pillar one we have 11 drills for pillar two now one of the first things we talk about is understanding how to hinge so we're going to train how we work the lower body then we're going to train how we unwind the upper body there's going to be a time when you learn how to create more acceleration and move the arm so one of the things that we talk about is having the body and and moving within windows. So one of the windows that you guys want to see out there is being able to keep your arm inside that window. So you're going to look at our more advanced guys and these guys all kind of maintain the arm through that window. So if we go through the base of the chest and the base of the shoulder, that's going to be your big thing that's going to help you out a lot. And again, you're going to notice the young guy, he's still kind of in that window. Two, three, and four are all kind of in their window. Notice here, again, same thing. You're going to see that. The whole idea with the entry is you guys want to feel create that long upper body long left arm that's moving around in a long path because of its long here it's gonna be long here, which is what you need to be able to square up and punch the shot. And you're gonna notice again, all these throwers do that. Here's your young guy, day one, he's just learning. He was doing a little bit of gliding and you know now he's pulling down a little bit like he would in his glide. And that's gonna just be a, a little bit of a habit that he'll learn to break. But imagine where this athlete's gonna be in a matter of months and especially in a few years. The big key today though, we're just focusing on the entry. We wanna get the knee, the foot, and the hip all moving into the throw and we want to have the arm long and this is going to create the long path to be able to enter and this is what we're going to talk about in the next video we're going to talk about how you set up the sprint position today again you want to keep thinking about the lower body moves ahead and the upper body moves on a long path in but one of the things is that's not going to be optimal if you look at the best guys in the world if you looked at Krauser and Kovacs and Walsh you're going to notice that that arm is really long they take that long path because that's setting up your chain reaction which is going to allow that long to short in the middle and then open long again which is going to ex the lower body is going to be accelerating the upper body's on the long path and that creates that big punch into the finish so the next video we're going to talk about dropping in applying speed after that we'll talk about the finish if you would like to learn how to throw the shot the rotational shot in a single day be sure to check out the throwing chain reaction system link below so remember to hit that subscribe button comment below be sure to share and we'll see you on the next video